Hello, I'm Niels Balk. I'm a product developer at Gunt, and I'm in charge of the refrigeration technology. Today, I would like to introduce you our new device. In many conversations with our customers, I hear again and again how difficult it is to teach the thermodynamic basics of refrigeration because students often have to learn four to five different thermodynamic processes within one semester. And especially in refrigeration, uh, we have the closed circuit which leads to interactions between the components and that can be very mind-blowing at the beginning. But despite all these complaining, I also have good news for you. Because based on all these problems, we've designed a device which allows you to teach the basics within a laboratory session. So students not only learn about um, the theory, they can also touch it and feel it firsthand. Our focus on the essentials of the refrigeration technology allows us to streamline the device to its four main components the evaporator, the compressor, the condenser, and the expansion valve. You may have noticed this unique pipe arrangement. And this unique pipe arrangement is meant to represent a comparison between two things in a graph called the logarithmic pH diagram. Imagine a uh, coordinate system with two axes. On the vertical axis, we have the pressure from here. And on the horizontal axis, we have the heat content of the refrigerant or the specific enthalpy. So this unique pipe arrangement and the position of the main components helps students to always visualize the concept of the logarithmic pH diagram in their minds. And building on the concept of the log pH diagram, we've color coded the lines of the device to help the students to differ between high and the low pressure stage. So the low pressure stage is indicated in blue in the lower part of the device, while the high pressure stage is indicated in red in the upper part. The ET380 has many different levels of complexity. So when complaining a complex topic, it could be helpful if we start with the main components in a simple way. So that heat is always transferred from one part to another part, from the evaporator to the condenser. So if you're um, using a heat pump, the evaporator is outside and the condenser is inside the house, bringing the heat content inside the house. And in the case of a refrigerator, it's vice versa. Now let's take it a step further and visualize the coordinate system in our minds again. If we have a look at the evaporation process, for example, uh, the pressure level remains constant but along the horizontal axis, we can see an increase in specific enthalpy. We now have a look at the compressor. Of course, the pressure level raises along the vertical axis, but also we can see an increase in the specific enthalpy from here to here. In the next step, we have a look at the condenser where all the heat is released. And what we can see is that the condensation takes place at a constant pressure level and the specific enthalpy drops back to its initial level. To make the liquefied refrigerant to evaporate again, we make use of an expansion valve to bring the pressure back um, to the evaporation pressure. Interestingly, the specific enthalpy remains constant. I would like to take this opportunity to show you the transparent construction of the evaporator and the condenser. The glass tube construction provides a unique opportunity to observe the various states of matter directly. And being able to witness phase transition in evaporators and condensers, and as well as superheating and subcooling, that makes for truly impactful learning experience that sticks with the students for a long, long time. The evaporator is additionally equipped with vacuum tubes to prevent condensation of moisture from the ambient air, which would block our line of sight. I guess you've already noticed the oversized display of our PLC. On the first page of the PLC, 
we have a system diagram where all the measured data are displayed in real time. You can also switch the components on and off and set the value of the EC fans. With load dependency being crucial in refrigeration technology, thanks to our EC fans offering a volume of 1,700 cubic meters per hour. And on the next page, we have the lock pH diagram. Here, the thermodynamic cycle of the actual operating condition is shown in real time. The specific enthalpies can be read off directly. And for a low threshold start, it is advisable to query the aggregate states. Then we can continue with the thermodynamic changes of state where one variable is always constant. For example, the isotherms. We can follow the same approach for all other thermodynamic state changes as well, allowing us to explore how different variables behave when one of them is held constant. And if you're interested in teaching this topic to a much larger audience, like in a lecture hall situation, then thanks to the extensive connectivity of our PLC, we can display the data of the device on a medium of our choice. And you get either control of the system or you act as an observer. We can stream it um, on a PC at home, on a tablet, or even on a smartphone. And if you're interested in the remote capabilities of the system, please have a look at the link in the video description. On the next button, we have a time plot where all the recorded measured data is displayed over the time. You can just zoom in and out with two fingers as we are used to on our smartphones. For particular demanding lessons, you could choose any point on the time axis and ask our students what could have happened here to the refrigeration system at this characteristic point. All measured data can be transferred to a PC and can be processed in Excel. On the next button, we have animations of the four main components to help students to see inside the components. Let's have a look at the evaporator. We can see what happens in the different phases. So within the wet vapor phase, we see the actual evaporation. And in the overheated phase, we can see the superheating of the gas. Let's follow up with the compressor. What you can already see is that it is working in the fully gaseous phase. The blue low pressure gas is sucked in and it's expelled again on the high pressure side in red. Whenever you want, you can just pause the video and discuss the details with your students in a dialogue. If we look at the compressor from above, we see the rotating shaft and the working pistons. If we go a little deeper, we can see the suction valve. These are designed as simple reed valves. And there's also a reed valve on the high pressure side. Then, in the last step, we can see how the pressurized gas flows through the pulsation damper, which also works as an internal heat exchanger. And in the next step, we check the condenser. And what is particularly interesting is that the component works through three different phases. So in the fully gaseous phase, we have the T superheating. Then we have the condensation in the mixing phase. And in the liquid phase, the supercooling. And finally, let's have a look at the expansion valve. Here we can see the individual parts and assemblies in an exploded view and get information about their function. Then we will take a look at the adjusting screw. Many people think that the mass flow is regulated by the expansion valve. However, this is not entirely correct. In fact, the only thing we adjust is the degree of the superheat which determines how much the evaporator is loaded for the actual evaporation. The mass flow is determined by the thermal load 
and the available surface area of the evaporation. The next button shows the equilibrium of forces on a sectional view of a thermostatic expansion valve during a transient process. I hope that I've been able to give you small insight into the direct quality of the device, but however, there are no limits in designing your lessons with this device. And even if you did not have any contact with refrigeration technology yet, We've put together a comprehensive package of didactic material in our science center, so you can start your lessons right away. I hope you enjoyed the video, and for further information concerning our devices, please visit our website or visit us directly in Hamburg. Bye-bye.